Hello again. In this video we're going to go over Macro Basics and Easy Builder Pro. This video is intended for current structured text programmers. We're going to cover data types, built-in functions, basic editor overview, macro structures, and some basic logical statements. So let's get started. I went ahead and made a project and uh, I've got a few objects here. I've got some uh, numeric objects, uh, a couple toggle switches, and a pie chart. And um, so, and I also uh, embedded in the project a, uh, a timer. And uh, as you can see, I'm using some internal registers for the the different apparams of the of the timer and the reason I did this is so that um, we have something we can create some dynamic data to test in our in our project so let's take a look at the uh, macro library here I've already done a, a couple of uh, macros and we'll get into those in a little bit um, this interface is called the macro manager and this is how you access and uh, create new ones. From here you can import or export uh, macros from another project. Uh, you can access your function libraries here and of course the uh, help menu. Uh, you can also copy and paste uh, uh, macros within your own project so let's say that you had two or three that were similar and you just needed to change some right addresses or something like that uh, and, and I'm sure you can think of many other things you could use that for uh, to create a new one you just go ahead and click new here you can uh, actually name the uh, macro up here Uh, down here is your uh, text editing, editing area. You can actually comment out or uncomment out code or comment texts within your project. Uh, you can set uh, uh, bookmarks and step through your program a little bit at a time. Uh, we've got a search interface here. and uh, you can find and replace uh, certain keywords within your code. So let's go ahead and create a little bit of code. Uh, of course first thing we need to do is define our our objects within the code that we're going to use and of course we can have uh, integer objects um, you could have a short float um, you can make these objects can have uh, unsigned um, you can define more than one uh, more than one object in each one. This makes it a little simpler. You can create array objects. So that's an array of 10 right here. And of course uh, this can can be done uh, in these other formats. We also have uh, char you might use in um, for ASCII text creating ASCII objects to use so uh, let's move on of course we can do all your standard uh, logical functions
Uh, you can do a for statement. Uh, let's just put an I up here. Uh, you can do a wow. Now you may notice that uh, that uh, syntax is very similar to uh, Visual Basic or uh, some of the C languages. Uh, but there's a few nuances. Once you pick up the syntax, you'll see that that uh, that's fairly simple to to uh, to program. Uh, so anyway, uh, we've got a uh, save and compile tool here. It'll check for errors. Uh, let's say let's say I had an undeclared object in there. It would find that. Um, up here you can uh, define how often the uh, the uh, uh, macro cycles or you can um, just let something else from the uh, project make the uh, macro cycle on demand. Uh, you can use a, a uh, what they call a security condition which is just a, uh, a disable uh, condition that you can set using an internal bit, bit uh, from uh, the HMI. You can make the, uh, the macro execute one time as the HMI boots by checking here. And of course, uh, times 100 milliseconds, this is the cycle frequency. Um, we have a, uh, a function editor, what they call the API. Uh, you can go in here and uh, pick out some built-in functions, uh, like this is uh, get data. So, uh, let's pick something out of say LW200 so uh, we're gonna read into uh, integer 1 our object we're gonna read from um, local register LW200 and we're gonna do a read length of 1 now let's say you were uh, you are doing an array. Go ahead and move this up here. Let's say you were reading data into an array. Uh, I'm just going to make it simple and copy and paste this. Um, our starting point in the array to place the data we want to start with uh, register 0 in our array and we want to do a uh, read length of 10 because that's the size of our array so we're going to let's go ahead and change this to read from LW300 to LW309 and we're going to fill this array here with uh, with those values, and then they can be used in our in our project. Take for example, if we wanted to fill an array with uh, data from registers within our project, uh, perhaps maybe PLC registers or internal registers. So uh, let's do a little example of that real quick. Let's go ahead and make a short array. And uh, we'll make it 10 long. 
tell you what, let's just uh, use this read here. So I'm going to move our little if statement down here and I'm going to do this instead. So if the value in the register equal to i is equal to 10 then this statement will be true and we'll do whatever. So uh, I'll tell you what let's go ahead and just write I want to change this g to an s that makes that a set data and we're going to do array i i so we write the value of i into LW400. Go ahead and run a simulation here. And through the magic video, um, I've already re I've already created all of these registers. These are input registers LW300 through 309, and this will be our result register. Uh, LW400. So if I enter our target value here, we should get a 1 here. Go down to this register. And it's going to be number 30123. Three. So it's as simple as that. And um, let's take a quick look at the uh, at the other macros I prepared. Uh, here I'm doing a quick example of of converting a uh, an integer value into a float. Uh, we're actually taking our timer value and we're bringing it in and we're scaling it out to a to a a uh, floating decimal point value and uh, I actually did a uh, previous video on how to do some of this scaling but uh, but if you just look at the code you can see what we're doing there so go ahead and run a simulation and show you how all that works <clears throat> So uh, what we're doing, we're scaling these values, which is actually our timer results, out into this. This is seconds. And uh, we're actually uh, scaling these seconds into minutes right here. So this is a uh, point whatever of a minute it's going to display. And then down here, we're uh, converting it to hours. Uh, and I've got a toggle here to turn the uh, turn the thing off and on. Um, we're also uh, doing a little bit of math. We're taking our overall total timer value, our preset time, which happens to be 500 seconds, and we're deducting the elapsed time from that to populate our pie chart here. So these two values are also the registers that are read by the pie chart to develop this as the timer counts down. So uh, another cool little thing you can do with some uh, with macros. Uh, I did a little uh, scheduling type uh, macro here. We're actually uh, reading the uh, the HMI time into the system here. Uh, it's an array of three and uh, and this is the starting register. This is actually seconds and uh, uh, 18 is minutes and um, 
and 19 is ours. So we're doing a little uh, comparative statement here and uh, you'll also notice I'm doing a, a read here. I've got set points that I can define when this actual uh, scheduler, if you will, will do its thing. So uh, if time two, which we've already established is uh, hours equals set point two, uh, and if minutes equal that, then we're gonna look for the second, and then when we hit the set point second, we're gonna execute this uh, command here. I've defined a, uh, a Boolean object here. I named it bit, and we're gonna turn bit on, and uh, we're gonna write to local uh, bit register LB10, and um, and then when we get to the uh, second set point plus 10, we're going to write a zero into bit and then do that right. So um, over here on the uh, on our user interface, I've actually got a bit lamp right here, LB10, that is going to um, enunciate the value or the uh, the state of our <coughs> macro. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, and run a simulation. So uh, let's go ahead and enter some values here. So let's watch when we get to 20, our uh, bit comes on. And when we get to 30, our bit should go back off. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Well, that's about it. Uh, from here on out, all you need to do is use your imagination and your skills, and uh, you should be able to do about anything you want in these macros. They're great tools for scaling data, uh, for turning things on and off, for writing uh, values. You can use them uh, to scale data for data logging. A uh, million different things you can do. Your your uh, imagination's the limit. Thanks for watching, and be sure to come back and see more of our instructional videos.